Hello and welcome to eMedicore Patient's Corner Series. Today's discussion is on percutaneous nephrolithotomy. Percutaneous nephrolithotomy is a surgical procedure to remove stones from the kidney through a small incision or cut about a half inch in the back. The urologist inserts a telescope or a nephroscope through the incision into the hollow part of the kidney to the stone. The urologist then uses instruments to break the stone into pieces and removes them using suction. PCNL is usually used in patients with large, which are more than 2 cm or 0.8 inches, or irregularly shaped kidney stones, infected stones, and stones that were not broken up by extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy or by ure ureteroscopy. Here we have two diagrams showing what it will look like during the procedure and after the procedure. General anesthesia is usually used and typically you will need to stay about two to three days in the hospital. Although considered to be safe and minimally invasive, percutaneous nephrolithotomy or PCNL may carry serious risks including, but not limited to, bleeding and the potential need for blood transfusion, infection and sepsis, which is bacteria spreading into the bloodstream, injury to adjacent organs such as the bowels and liver, injury to the blood vessels going to the kidney, kidney failure, leakage of urine, conversion to open surgery, and additional surgery or operations needed. PCNL is one of the most effective techniques for making sure that patients are stone-free after the procedure. Occasionally, additional procedures may be needed to remove a stone. Though PCNL requires a small incision, it is less invasive than a full open surgery to remove a large kidney stone. You should discuss with your urologist other options including open surgery, ureteroscopy, and ESWL, extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. Your doctor will talk to you about the procedures, its indications, risks, benefits, alternatives, and likelihood of success based on the size and location of the stone. You will be given an opportunity to ask questions before you sign a consent form, allowing the doctor to do the procedure. Your doctor will do a history and physical exam and order diagnostic tests to make sure you are in good condition for the procedure. Let your doctor know the names and dosages of all medications that you are taking, including blood thinning medications, such as ibuprofen or aspirin over-the-counter medications, and supplements. Be sure to ask if you need to stop any of these medications prior to the procedure, and if so, how many days should you stop them before the procedure? Let your doctor know of any allergies that you may have, including tape, latex, or contrast material. Let your doctor know of any bleeding disorders that you may have, if you are or suspect that you are pregnant. If you suspect that you have a UTI, a urinary tract infection, you should have a negative, no growth urine culture prior to having this procedure. Be sure to not eat or drink anything after midnight or at least 8 hours prior to the procedure. Depending on the size and the location of the stones, it may take 1 to several hours. After the procedure, you should expect to have a nephrostomy tube, a small tube coming out of your back to allow urine to drain from the kidney into a bag. The nephrostomy tube usually remains in place for one to two days. You should expect to have a ureteral stent inside the ureter between the kidney and the bladder to help drain urine from the kidney. It is typically removed in your doctor's office in one to two weeks. You should expect to have a Foley catheter, a tube to drain your urine from your bladder for about one day. It is important that you get out of bed and walk with supervision from your nurse the day after your surgery. You should have an SCD 
sequential compression device applied to your legs when you are not walking to aid in the prevention of blood clots in your vein. You may need a second look procedure to remove any remaining stones. Your doctor may decide to remove the nephrostomy tube or send you home with the tube. Avoid straining, heavy lifting, pushing or pulling for about two to four weeks. You may go back to work after about one week. Call your urologist if you have a fever over 101 degrees Fahrenheit or have the chills. Usually, this indicates you have an infection or possible obstruction of the urinary tract. You should be seen by your urologist immediately. Call your urologist if you have severe bleeding with thick blood like ketchup or blood clots, intolerable pain, suffer from persistent nausea and vomiting, or you have urinating problems. eMedicore, core medical education. For everyone, from everywhere, forever free.